Okay, let's go ahead and record. Once again, good morning, everybody. It's good to have you all on this morning. We good are morning, uh, good evening, blessed, Sam. blessed, 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 aren't we? God Amen. is good. We're gonna we're gonna continue, kind of continue on talking about some uh, imagination things. I realized after a couple of weeks doing this with my hearing aids in that I don't speak as loud. So people were having trouble hearing me. So I decided to do this one, turn the volume up and do it without my hearing aids. Maybe, maybe you can hear me better. <laughs> so interesting. Sound is an interesting thing. I have found out. So, okay, I'm going to start off with a verse in Ephesians chapter four, and it goes like this. This is the Passion Translation. Most of my stuff is from the Passion Translation. Uh, it says, so with the wisdom given to me from the Lord, I say, you shall not live like the unbelievers around you who walk in their empty delusions. Their corrupted logic has been clouded because their hearts are so far from God. Their blinded understanding and deep-seated moral darkness keeps them from the true knowledge of God. And what, what he's talking about here is that they don't, they don't understand who they are. And they don't understand their, their true place in Christ. And uh, it's a little bit... It's a, I mean, it's kind of an, for lack of a better word, an awkward, awkward passage, I guess, maybe, because uh, it takes it takes a revelation and a, and a word from God to totally understand it. I I think anyway. Uh, but they, basically, they explain that in light of the new life we've been given in Christ, which everybody's been given, but not all not all understand that. We believers need to tap into the imagination that God has given us to re that reveals his path, for lack of a better word, his path and his will for us. So, and in, in King James, it calls it vanity in their minds. He calls it, it's how, it's, how it's put in there. And what, what that means, the word vanity means futility. And so the things that, that people that don't understand who they are in Christ, the things that they think of are, are futile, you know, to, to us probably, or to even to, even to them in a, in a way of speaking. Hey, what's that verse again, JL? It is uh, Ephesians chapter 4, 17, 18. Thank you. And so it leads us, I mean, because... Because the world is the way the world is, it's easy for us to get caught up in things of the world and not understand where um, what or what, what our walk is with Christ without allowing allowing His imagination and through us to show us where where to go, and as uh, as those who have, have had that revelation, there is no, no reason for us to walk around as blind people and, and not understand where he has for us to go. If that, I hope that's making sense. It's like, it's like a, a transient homeless person is someone who wanders, lives on the street, sleeps under a bridge. And that's what kind of the picture that this verse is bringing of those that don't understand the, the power of God's thoughts in our mind and or his imagination through us. And in a, let me see what, Oh, in the Greek word, 
the Greek word is translated understanding in the verse I just read is dianoia. And this Greek word literally means deep thought. And it's not a casual thought, it's not a surface thought, but a deep thought. And we could compare it to meditation. I mean, that's kind of how it's compared. And in other other scriptures, it's been translated as meditation. And uh, in Luke chapter 1, verse 51, it says, it's translated as imagination. That same word is translated as imagination. And the verse says that God has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. And that's where, so it's translated th that way there. And uh, uh, there's, there's no way we can understand what God has for us without imagina imagination. It's his imagination that is leads us on and gives us direction. And so without, without understanding, without, not, without imagination, it seems like we, we could walk around alienated from our life and the way we, you know, he has for us to go. Okay, in Matthew, let me see where am I going? No. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 through 16 says this. I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose for which Christ Jesus laid hold of me to make me his own. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. So let all who are fully mature <clears throat> have the same passion. And if anyone is not yet gripped by these desires, God will reveal it to them. And let us all advance together to reach this victory prize, following one path with one passion. And then in Proverbs, Proverbs 4, chapter two, or chapter 4, verse 25 and 27, it says, set your gaze on the past before you. When we set our gaze on something, that's that's our that's setting our imagination on things. That's what God is giving us in, in our mind. Set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose, looking straight ahead. Ignore life's distractions. Watch where you're going. Stick to the path of truth. The road will be safe and smooth before you. Don't allow yourself to be sidetracked for even a moment or take the detour that leads it leads to darkness. So he's just instructing us there, and you know it's just to I say instruct, I say instructing. That's probably the wrong word, but he's he's encouraging us there to walk in the path of his revelation. I think is a way the best way for me to put it. And then. Uh, And then Jesus quoted Isaiah, about, uh, basically about the same same subject. He said, in Matthew chapter 13, verse 14 and 15, he says, The prophecy of Isaiah describes these perfectly. Although they listen carefully to everything I speak, they don't understand the thing I say. They look and pretend to see, but the eyes of their hearts are closed. Their minds are dull and slow to perceive. Their ears are plugged and are hard of hearing. They have deliberately shut their eyes to the truth. <clears throat> in, the, in the context of that, he's talking about the things that he has shown them and how they don't, they, meaning the world, is, you know, is what I'm talking about, don't, uh, don't really hear and don't perceive and don't understand the images that God is trying to portray for them. And trying to show them who they are and and, and what he what he is to them and the, his love for them and everything they they just they just don't get it and I I believe firmly believe that it's our uh, position to 
love everybody and sh show grace to everyone to, so that they might draw to Christ and draw to that understanding. And it's not that they're not already part of the family. It's just that they don't, they're not part of the, the family that's getting the abundance that God has for us. So. God is always speaking. He's not, he's not quiet. He's, he's always speaking. And <clears throat> the problem most of the time is that we're speaking over him, you know, and so we can't hear him because we're speaking over him. But God is constantly speaking and we just need to tune our ears to that. We use our imagination to help us understand. And Jesus went on to say in Matthew chapter 13, that the people would learn, <clears throat> learn to hear and see properly, they would understand with their hearts, and he could work in their lives. And he's he tells us this this in John in John chapter ten verse three and four that he's always speaking. We recognize his voice. The sheep recognize the voice of the true shepherd, for he calls his own by name and leads them out, for they belong to him. When he has brought all of his sheep, he walks ahead of them, and they will follow him, for they're familiar with his voice. And then he goes on to say about him understanding him, it says, in Matthew chapter 13, 16 through 23, it says, But blissful are your eyes, for they see. Delighted are your ears, for they are open to hear all these things. Many prophets and godly people yearned to see these days of miracles that you've been favored to see. They would have given everything to hear the revelation that you favored to hear. Now you are ready to hear the explanation of the parable of the sower. What was sown along the path represents the one who listens to the message of the kingdom, but doesn't understand. It. The adversary then comes and snatches away what was sown into your heart. The adversary being the the cares of the world, the thoughts that go through our mind that aren't co are cohesive to what God has for us or cohesive to his word. Shortly after he hears that troubles and persecutions come, come because of the kingdom message he received. So maybe they gain a little, a little bit of understanding, gain a little bit of understanding, but just enough to cause turmoil in our mind. Then he quickly falls away, for the truth didn't sink deeply into his heart. The one sown among the thorns represent one who receives a message, but all of life's busy distractions, his divided heart, his ambition for wealth resulting in suffocating the kingdom message, and it becomes fruitless. But what was sown on good, rich soil represents the one who hears and fully embraces the message of the kingdom. Their lives bear good fruit. Some yield a harvest of 30, 60 even 100 times as much as the sun. And that, all that stuff is God's word planted into our imagination. And as we understand what he's saying to us, we, we have the opportunity to decide for ourselves almost whether it's good we're, we're we're good soil or we're not you know and so and i think that everybody everybody wants to be good soil uh some people don't understand how and i i do believe there once again i believe it's it's up to us who understand and know the love of jesus to just show love, his love and his grace to them to the point that they under they can understand what God's speaking to them. And Psalm, Psalms chapter one, verse one and two says, what, what delight comes to the one who follows God's ways? He won't walk in steps with the wicked, nor share the sinner's way, nor be found sitting in the scorner's seat. His passion is to remain true to the word of I am. Meditating night, day and night 
on the true revelation of light. And in, in, the, in Psalm chapter 2, verse 1, it says, uh, it says, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? It's lack of under, it's their lack of understanding. Many people have more knowledge of the word than they have experience in it. We need to do more than just read the Bible. The Bible isn't the wherewithal. It is, it is a good place to, to gain uh, insight, some insight. Some insight has to be has to come from the revelation of Jesus, the Jesus that lives in us. And we we can contemplate it and see it as it uh, as it manifests as it manifests in our life and others' lives. We can actually if we go back to look at some of the stories in the Bible. We can see things, see his his will manifest in their lives too. In John chapter fourteen, verse twelve through fourteen, it says this: "I tell you this timeless truth." The person who follows me in faith, believing in me, will do the same mighty miracles that I do, even greater miracles than these, because I go to be with my Father. For I will do whatever you ask me to do when you ask me in my name. And that is how the Son will show that the Father is really like what the Father is really like and bring glory to him. Ask me anything in my name, and I will do it for you. So the works are the works that he he did in our imagination. We can see those things and and know that we can do those things. But we have to be able to see those things in our mind. I'm uh, Matthew twelve verse forty nine and fifty says this. Look closely, for this is my true family. When you obey my heavenly Father, that that makes you part of my true family. Or when you follow our, my heavenly father. Uh, I didn't get a chance to ask ahead of time, but Bob, you sent me a, uh, a blog post. Can I read that? Because it follows right along with what I'm talking about. A absolutely. Go right ahead. Okay. This is what Bob wrote, and I, it follows exactly where I'm, where I'm going with this. He says, I believe the great stories in the Bible. Their miraculous messages inform my soul and influence my life in ways that make them true. But what if instead of the miraculous preserved, miraculously preserved history of God and his creation, they're the ultimate work of fiction? I believe Jacob wrestled with an angel all night and was blessed. I believe Moses saw a burning bush and freed his people. I believe David defended Israel with five smooth songs. And God spoke through Elijah and Jeremiah. I believe John the Baptist was filled with the Spirit in his mother's womb, knowing his cousin would be the Messiah. I believe Jesus was a man who healed the sick, resurrected the dead, and showed us who God among us really is. But what if these stories are just well-intended tales of mythical heroes? I believe the Beatitudes tell us how to be. I believe a Samaritan rescued a man from a ditch and fulfilled the two greatest commandments. I believe love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself is a complete gospel. But what if they're all just lofty aspirations? I believe Bible stories are divinely inspired writings, literal or allegorical. Bibles are books of miraculous messages that inform the lives of searching souls in ways that make them true. But what if instead of a well-written truth, they're only the spirit, spiritual visions of mystics. If Jesus was a holy apparition, would you still recognize the righteousness of feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, clothing the naked, visiting prisoners, caring for widows and orphans, and loving the brokenhearted? Do you do these things now, literal or allegory? The Bible's miraculous messages are only true to you if they're what you do. 
that I read that and it was it was so it's so went along with what I was I was talking about and it's so um uh, so made me think made me made me ponder what if we saw in our imagination ourselves raising somebody from the dead what if we saw in our imagination clear through fruition laying hands on somebody and they became instantly healed what if we saw our life making a difference in our community by the love that we share of Jesus Christ and his his love and grace Romans chapter 8 verse 24 and 25 says this for this is the hope of our salvation but hope means that we must trust and wait for what is still seen for why would we need to hope for something we already have? So because our hope is set on what is yet to be seen, we patiently keep on waiting for its fulfillment. A properly directed imagination is the most important and most underutilized function of our lives, both physically and spiritually. Our whole lives are built around imagination. Physically, we can't function without imagination. We can't read or remember or properly communicate without one. We can't relate to God without an imagination either. Our imagination helps us believe and dream about the future. And while this concept of the imagination is found throughout the Bible, it's not always called imagination. Sometimes in the, well, especially in the New Testament, like we just read, it's called hope. Mm -hmm. It's translated as hope for, for you know, if we are saved by hope, our hope for this, the hope of our salvation, our complete, the completeness. Salvation is completeness. It's not just an act. It's a completeness. JL, I, uh, I learned several years ago when I went through depression, the Lord really showed me that faith is a substance of things hoped for. <laughs> that means that if you don't have hope, you don't have anything to put your faith in. Hope is literally a container for faith. It's literally Amen. a it's Amen. literally to a, a place to put your imaginations and Amen. apply them. You're just one step ahead of me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Hebrews. I'll, I'll, I'll sit down in my second row and shut up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, that's good. It's all good. I love it. Hebrews 1.11 says this. Now faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes a foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. It is all evidence required to prove what is still unseen. And the King James Version puts it like this. It says, now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And we do understand that faith is the faith, faith is not our faith. It's God's faith. In first John chapter five, four, it says, and this is King James, it says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And we know it's not our faith because he says in Galatians chapter 220, it says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. This is King James also. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. The faith of the Son of God, not the faith in the Son of God, but faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And that, that me is all inclusive of everyone in the whole world, past, present, future. So, anyway, that's where we're at. Shut that door, please. Right here, this door. This door. Shut the door, please. Grandkids just showed up. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so, thoughts? Kitsy. Okay, this is all so, so good, JL. I really appreciate it. i um, not exactly sure where I want to start here. I've been taking some notes and <clears throat> through the um, what I've been hearing this week in my studies and all. Um, God wants us to be a partner with him and not just to believe in him. And you had mentioned about uh, the good soil. And I think that being good soil is doing just that, being a partner with the Lord. Hallelujah. And um, it, it's interesting because um, in, in the Jewish faith, they, uh, people who, people will study under a rabbi and they want to, don't want to just learn about him they want to be like him yeah. but the disciples did not study under jesus jesus chose them yeah. that he was he would be his rabbi or their rabbi and there weren't only 12 disciples there were somewhere in the bible there's 70 and another place in the bible there are 120 or something like that and it's not just men it it's growing. women as well and um and um oh so, so I lost my train of thought here uh but we uh, he wants us to be followers of him and be like him so that we can um repair the world and he does that through us and uh the difference uh, let me read this one here oh here's another one you never, you never know where your adventure is going to take you. Just say yes, no matter what it will cost you. Sorry. No matter how it will hurt you, what you will gain, no matter what you will lose, be a person who wants to follow Jesus and not just believe in him. Amen. I mean, he blesses people through those followers. He doesn't use them. I don't, I try never to use that word use it when I'm talking about what Jesus does through us. Right. Um, but he blesses people yeah. through his followers. And, and it's an exciting time, but it's, um, you know, it's not an easy road always. Yeah. But, but um, anyway, that's where this discussion uh, took me. So he thanks. Does. He does his work through us. And so, yeah. yeah. And so, blesses. And ble yeah, blesses through, through blessings, through blessings and love and, and grace. And yeah. the way, yeah, it's all, it's all about how he loves. Oh, yeah, how exactly. He lo oh, how oh, he love loves. Yep. Amen. Yep. He loves us so. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> amen. Amen. It, it, it's interesting. However that if he'd wanted us to follow, he would have stayed. He, he left. He mm -hmm. said, guys, I'm done here. You're going to have greater stuff than I had. You're, you're going to do greater stuff than I did. Amen. By the way, the, 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 the number that we know really stuck is 120 because that was the bunch that were in the upper room, right? I mean, that was the core. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, and, 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 and you're absolutely right. There were not only men, but many women and so on and so forth. That gets lost in the Southern Baptist Convention. But, but, <laughs> but, but he literally wants us to be him. And, and, and I'm not trying to say, but, but the be attitudes. I, when I said in the blog, when I use that term, I, I always want to go be hyphen attitudes. That's how to be in the world. Mm -hmm. And and it's interesting also that it, it looks like a root word of beauty, B-E-A-U, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but but he 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 empowered us to do things that he he never got out of Israel. Yeah. And here we are in Kansas, right? 
uh, I've learned whatsoever state I'm in, they're in to be content, even Kansas, <laughs> Paul would have written. But, but, but he, he empowered us, so it really, it, it goes beyond the ultimate respect for him is not to follow him, but in literally be him. That's the ultimate mm -hmm. worship of him, in my opinion. Stacy, what you got, brother? Hey, good to see you guys today. Yeah. Uh, time with what Kitsy was saying, you know, um, get my hand down so I can talk. Uh, it does bless those people, but man, you know what? It, it blesses us too. And, uh, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I can talk about this thing that happened this week because it's not me doing it. <laughs> it really wasn't. But, uh, I'm, I'm working through the week in downtown St. Louis, right? And uh, in my imagination, JL, my imagination said, because I mean, I can't cross the street down there without being confronted by three different panhandlers before I get across the street, right? My imagination says, well, Stacey just don't carry any cash. And they got you off the hook, right? So that's what my imagination did. And it works pretty good most of the time. So I was Thursday night, I was walked down a couple blocks from where I'm staying and was going in and this guy said, man, can you give me something to eat? And it's like, I'm sorry, man, I don't carry any cash. I said, you got a card? And it's like, Ugh. but then I said, come on in, man. So we came on in and we went in and uh, I bought him dinner. I remembered to ask his name and talk to him. But, uh, and this was not my imagination, but I, I asked my buddy Shay, I said, man, stay and eat with me. You don't have to. But uh, I, I would like you to stay and, and share a meal with me, you know, in this restaurant. And I won't go into all the details and stuff, but uh, he hung with me for probably 35, 45 minutes until he just kind of had to get out of there. But, uh, man, when I left, I was, you know, that me part of my brain said, man, he just bought this dude like a $25 cheeseburger and order fries, you know. You could have done this, that, the other thing, but the real blessing that I got from it, and I hope that Shay got from it too, was we sat down and shared a meal together, man to man, without, you know, it didn't matter that I was down there working for Gulfstream Aerospace and he was sleeping on the streets. We got to sit down and, and break bread together and just talk and, and be in mm -hmm. one another's company. And uh, I, I don't know what kind of a blessing he left with that, but it probably wasn't as big as the one I did. So, Amen. so that's Amen. all I want to say is that that that's, blessing is not just for them. Sometimes it's for us. And, and I Amen. think I probably got more out of that than he did. So I, I look at, I look at a blessing as a full circle. Yeah. Is it, and everything that's in, engulfed in that circle is in a blessing. And that includes us, of course, along with whoever else that comes into that circle. So uh, yeah, I totally agree with you. Thank you. Kitsy, what do you got? Well, I'll just have to say, Bob, I don't think Jesus ever left him. <laughs> He's still with us. So with that said, <laughs> um, and I agree with you, we need to be just like him. And that's another Amen. part of that. And I probably did not uh, mention that. But do, we don't learn about them, but we want to be him. We want to be just like him. Like you said, Bob, I agree totally. He's absolutely here, by the way. No question about it. You're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. There, here a while back, we were talking about, uh, we talked about uh, great, you know, God being, saying his name was I am, right? And since then, that made such an impact on me that since then, <laughs> I introduce myself when I go into, I, I go into different people's homes many times a week, people that I've never met before. And I introduce myself as I am, jl gray and i always use that i've been always using that i am that way he's leading that conversation he's leading that connection and and i want to be i want him to be the, the lead of that but it make, keeps me mindful that he he is the one that's, that's that's in control or in in my life leading my life so yeah mm -hmm. i love it stan what you got Okay, the scriptures teach us that uh, Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches, mm -hmm. which signifies our oneness with him. 
And so uh, in that regard, I believe that the follow me has translated or transferred into abide in me. Yeah. He's divine and we are the branches. We are yeah. abiding in him. There's this con- oneness that doesn't end. It doesn't, you know, there's no break in it. Um, so, you know, it helps us to understand that and to see things from that perspective. It's not that we are trying to imitate Christ. We are Christ because yeah. of our oneness. Amen. You know, and, you know, the, the branches cannot survive without the vine. And so the abide part is that if we're cut loose from the vine, we can't survive. So that's, we abide by abiding in him as a being part of that, that complete, uh, complete vine branches, the whole nine yards thing. So yeah. In line with what Kitchy said earlier, uh, go out on the limb. That's where all the good fruit is. Amen. That's good. <laughs> Jeff, what do you got? Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you, Stan. That was great. That that was that was the piece uh, I needed to hear just now. Uh, <clears throat> I want to say uh, to uh, uh, Stacy, um, you know, when you tap the grace tap, you're going to get you're going to get in the flow. And as a as an electrician, I would say you're completing a circuit. And whatever the flow is, meaning whatever the demand is. For the need for grace, that and and where it comes from, is is uh, is is the uh, is the energy level you're going to experience too, because you're in that circuit, you're in that flow. You've decided to let God uh, act out on your on their behalf through you. And so, I mean, just using different words to what you've already experienced, but I mean that's that's the grace tap, and. And it could be like a tap on the shoulder to remind you. It can be like a beer tap, you know, whatever, whatever makes it stick for you. But it's, it's a wonderful experience. And that's the blessing we speak of, I think, anyway, is that is the fact we're in we're in that circuit. We've been we've been joined to a grace work. I want to say that. And then, um, uh, of course, Kitsy already said it, but, you know. And, and Bob affirmed uh, he was speaking in a specific in terms of Jesus leaving. Yes, he did leave the form he was in, but it was for the purpose of advancement. You know, we know this. We know it was to go to the place we've been called to, which is joining him in the spirit work of the kingdom, right? So uh, that's an elevation. It's a promotion. It's it is it's moving mm-hmm. forward, not backwards, uh, and it's it's a wonderful thing, and it's a, and it's and it's it's kingdom life we experience and tell others of and demonstrate through the work of God happening in uh, in and through our lives. Amen. Amen. Uh, That's good stuff. One other, yeah. There's one other thing, um, but I might. I might have to come back on that one. So go ahead. Dana, what do you got? Well, um, I thought that what you're saying is Christ in us, the imagination of glory. Instead of just the hope, the imagination of glory, Christ. Amen. Amen. It makes it easier for us to see it when we say it that way. Because we know that we can see things in our imagination. We don't always know that we can see things that we that are hope, if that makes any sense. So by saying Christ in us, the imagination of glory, we can imagine that glory within us. And I, I love that. That's, a, that's great. Thank you for bringing that up. That's, that's from the, the DIV there, Dana. Yeah. <laughs> Dana, Dana International Version. <laughs> Dana inspired. Let's say inspired, version, Dana inspired yeah. version. Yeah. There you go. That'll work. I like it. What else? Who else? More thoughts. He gives us he gives us all kinds of imagination imaginations and things to to do. I mean, like Stacy was talking about, you know, he 
he gives us opportunity to uh, see ourselves doing more than we think we can do sometimes. And uh, if we see it and see it long enough and believe it, it just uh, it comes to pass. That's, that's how it works. Lenny, what do you got, brother? I just saw Jeff up there. I was just going to yield the floor to him if he wants to talk. <laughs> no, go ahead. You were on there first. Okay. I was just going to mention that the verse that you mentioned a few minutes ago about the faith of Jesus. Yeah. It almost kind of says we've got faith backwards. Yeah. God, God's the one who has faith in us. And yeah. he knew Man. if things got turned around, and we actually knew that he loved us and always loved us. That would be the key to Amen. taking us back to where we should have been. And that would have fixed everything. And that's where, hey. we, that's what he got for us. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's right. And when we, when we realize that that's the key that opens yeah. the way to everything. I, I, uh, a lot of the things I write during the week, my devotional during the week, I make sure and bring out the fact that it is the faith of Jesus and not our faith. And it's his faith in us that makes those things come to pass. And I appreciate you bringing that up because I think it's, I think it's a real key and you're right. It's a big, it's a big deal. Jeff, there we go. Well, brother Lenny, you were just trying to be the last of the first. Thanks. Thanks for the offer. Uh, two things. Hopefully I'll get to the second thing. Um, where we, um, I'm reminded of, of, uh, where Jesus got his training, if you will. He didn't really study under a rabbi. At least we don't have any proof text of that. Uh, and, and there's no history recorded of a time when he would have been coming up under someone, but there are other other sources extra biblical that suggest he you know he that mary was uh basically told not to put him under the tutors under the rabbis uh in to train him up and as i heard someone else mention i don't know if it was here or elsewhere about you know you don't know what someone's teaching your child if you're not a part of that instruction part of that school and so, you know, I I think that the this this abiding uh, Stan was talking about, you know, this basically being who we are in this in this in this uh, uh, branch of the vine is is the trans is the transformation of of our of everything about us or or the or the be coming, not not something to happen, but the, but the very transition into a, a different creature. And so, uh, I wanted to say that that we can trust God to direct us, even though we don't have direct text, if you will, to know how Christ was formed in in His earthly life. We know we know that the work of god brought it about and we can trust that same god to bring that work of transformation and growth and whatever word you want to give it training discipling tutoring is going to happen in our life we can cooperate with that, you know or ask for it you know i'm reminded you know said that uh, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask what you will and it will be done unto you. And, and so we could cooperate in that sense to grow in the knowledge of the Christ that is already within. I don't know what the second thing was. But I'll, I'll yield the floor. Amen. Good stuff. Bob, what do you got? My first call every Sunday is with my uh, atheists, Buddhist, and Presbyterian group. I love to remind them, by the way, that 
Britney Spears is an anagram for Presbyterians, just for the record. But uh, this morning, we were talking about mystical experiences. And there literally is a guy on that call that's got four degrees in, in religious re, religion and mysticism uh, from Notre Dame. I mean, this guy's, are, I'm sorry, from Harvard. This guy's an amazing guy. But at one point, we were talking about contemplation. And by the way, if you'd really track that word down, it, 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 the, the root word of it is temple, contemple. A contemplation and 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 we were talking and, and it came to me that we are the temple uh, and and I ask a question there and I'll ask a question I'll ask the same question here the Bible says study to show thyself approved it doesn't say go to a teacher what if if, if, if we're truly made in his image and I believe we are what if Jesus didn't need to go be taught because he already knew? And, and, and what Mary wisely did and Joseph wisely did is didn't encumber him with being taught, but rather, rather allowed, allowed the image of God that he certainly manifest, just allowed that to grow. We knew he grew, he grew in wisdom and favor with st and stature with God and man. We know that when he was 12 years old, which would have been his bar mitzvah age, when he, when he became a, to Jewish in the Jewish religion a man, we know that he sat in the temple for three days and taught the rabbis. They were blown away by him. It, is it weird or, or, or it's all, it could all be weird. It, 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 is it, is it unsound thinking to think that we really know what we need to know? It's, it's really in there. And, and so instead of going somewhere to find it, we need to allow it to emerge from us. Yeah. This kind that's of question that either advances things or gets you kicked off a call, by the way, you know, that's a very but interesting thought. It, it, it it, it, it is, and it and it's it's not me trying to be big G God. Please don't misunderstand me. Quite the opposite. Again, I go back to who much is given, much is required, man. I mean, if 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 what I'm saying is true of us, we got we got some we got some stuff to do to measure up to the bar we've been given. But I, I believe we can do it. I believe we are doing it. God's given us those looks, looks into that stuff through our imagination. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. I image, by the way, is it, the, the root word there is image. You see it. Right. You, you may physically see it. Uh, but, but I've been asked to do this podcast. Uh, in the next three or four weeks, Bishop Bell's asked me to, and he wants me to talk about epiphany. That that's when all of a sudden something becomes very clear to you. Mm -hmm. And and I look back, and my life has been made up of epiphanies. <laughs> I, I, it's not like I've had a plan. It's <laughs> like I've seen stuff and thought, "Wow, I got to do that." My you know, my first great example is when that girl walked in and sat down across from me 59 years ago. And I said, well, that's the one I'm going to end up with. Now, it's interesting to me, by the way, when I was thinking about that, and how does it relate? How does me seeing Flo and having an epiphany that she was the one, the girl, even though I didn't realize the gravity of what I was saying to myself at the time. But how does that line up scripturally? Well, the first thing God did was give Adam Eve. Amen. And, and so... Imageization, imageization is, is profound because it, what it does is it opens the door for these supernatural realizations. Yeah. And there's a constant stream of them out there if we're looking. Yep. They're looking for us. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Lord's Lord's five hundred thousand watts clear channel. He's broadcasting all the time. <laughs> Amen. 
Amen. That's what I was saying earlier. He's speaking all the time. Do we turn the radio on? That's the question. Old country tune there. Uh, uh, exactly. Stacey, right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I'll age you. But, but that's really what's happening. It, 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 the, the, it's, I, don't, I don't have the words for it. Amen. I'm pretty good with words. I don't have the words for it, but it's there. Amen. I, I, Amen. I, let me say one other thing. I, I hate to bogart the call, but I, please forgive me. Just a moment. Let me get to hey, it. Hey, Bob. Bob, Yo. let me just interject one word. A tune. Yeah. A tune. Huh? A T U N E. A tune. A tune. <laughs> That's the word I heard. Yeah. Ahead, By the way, one of those three three chord three strand chords is not easily broken. I do, when I think about a tune, I think about it. I wrote a I wrote a blog not too long ago based on the scripture uh, in Matthew, and I want to get to it because I want to read it right. Uh, uh, and I'm getting there. Power of love. I think it's next. It, I wrote, it, it's here. And, and the scripture's out of Matthew, and it, it'll catch up. But, but it, it was talking about how, how it's, it's greater than the temple. Uh, Matthew 12, 50 talks about it, it, it's coming, and it's greater than the temple. And the first sentence I wrote, and my blogs are all epiphanies. I don't know what I'm going to write until I, they start. But what I said was, if we try to name it, we don't comprehend its dimension. It's bigger than we have words for. We just don't turn it into an ism. Just go with it. Amen. Amen. That's true. True. I'm gonna, Melissa. What do you got? Um. I mean, I don't need to talk if you were gonna no, you're say good. something. You're up. Okay. I, uh, um, Bob, I loved what you said. It, it um, made me think of something I read yesterday on Facebook, and I tried to look for it earlier. I really wish I had saved it, but um, I, I think that is the case. It is all in us. It is, we, I mean, we're whole, we're complete. Um, just because it's not all showing, it's not all manifest doesn't mean it's not there. And um, this blog post I read was about, um, he said the way he likes to look at it is, you know, Jesus isn't, isn't changing us. I mean, our original design was perfection. <laughs> so it's a more of a matter of restoring. And if you think of it as a, um, Think of a grand master restoring a, a, a just a gorgeous piece of art and the care that goes into and the time that goes into they don't they're not remaking that art they're just slowly stripping away the layers of stuff that's been piled on it uh, the grime and the excess stuff that's been picked up and restoring it back down to its original perfect design and and i really liked that analogy and i think that's what he's doing with us and then the other thing i wanted to say it was earlier in the call but i i um you jl and bob both um answered a question for me i um i was sitting here thinking okay but what if you sorry what if you um are imagining those things, are asking for those things, and 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 you're not seeing them. What then? Well, the answer is hope. <laughs> the answer is you don't give up. You keep going and you keep hoping. And in time, that hope will manifest. There, there's a little bit of a key here too. I, I believe we can imagine something and still not see it completed. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, but then I get into some issues of, well, that means I'm not doing it right. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not meaning that. I don't think God's that nitpicky. But... It's just not, the, the, it's not that you're not doing it right. It's just that uh, we don't, sometimes we don't, we don't carry it through far enough. 
uh, know, yeah. but I mean, we, we, we imagine the thing that we, that we hope for. And yet uh, we, even though we imagine it, we don't get, we don't necessarily always see it completed. And sometimes yeah. that's God gives us that completion. And sometimes it's, we see, we can see it in our, in our own mind. You know what I mean? And so like if I, um, and so, and it's sometimes if we don't have the answer yet, it's because God have, hasn't given us that complete picture. Does that make and sense? So, yes. And something that just jumped in my head is, and sometimes the outcome is different. Um, it's not uh -huh. that we're not having an outcome. It's just a different outcome than we thought we would get. It's, well, that, we, that's, you yeah, know, our I mind. Was, I loved Stacy's story and I was sitting here going, you know, I want to do that. I want to buy somebody dinner. I feel like I'm the recipient of blessings all the time. I want to bless people. <laughs> you know, I don't, and when is when is that time? Let, me, come? let me tell you, so let me tell you I something. Just, I, hate, I hate to interrupt you, but you do. You do bless people all the time. So, so it's, but you're, it, you're it, muted and we love you. Thank you. It, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive, Melissa. I mean, but, uh, jokingly, I, 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 I fulfill, a, uh, I took on a mantle of Paul. JL told me uh, when we first talked about Paul, uh, he said, Paul used to call me every week and say, how's business? Is this a good week to borrow a little money? <laughs> and I said, I'll take that mantle. So every week I have to come up with some original reason to call JL to borrow money from him. Right. And on his birthday, I called him and I said, you know, brother, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. So I would like to offer you the gift of giving to me for your birthday. <laughs> and, 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 and I thought that was pretty clever. Right. But, but, but it really speaks to what you're asking, Melissa. <laughs> Yeah, I've been a musician yeah. my whole life, and none of it does any good if nobody's listening. Yeah. Did, did, yeah. When, when you, when you, when, when we can give to someone, see, Stacy's the guy that really got blessed, yeah. not the guy that got the hamburger. The guy that got the hamburger got a hamburger, and I'm sure he gained from it. But Stacy was more blessed by giving than that guy was by receiving. Yeah. Yeah, so that's. So, that's that cheeseburger was just a vehicle. The real Absolutely. blessing occurred at that table mm -hmm. with me and him across from each other, sharing a conversation and, and uh, just spending time together. That Absolutely. That and I don't know who he's sharing it with, but you're putting it out on a, a recording that maybe you heard 20 years from now and inspire somebody. So, mm -hmm. so, so look at how blessed it is. And, and so to be a receiver of blessing is almost an art form, Melissa, because it's humbling. But what you do by, by receiving blessings is you let people get a bigger blessing than the blessing they're giving you because it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Amen. Stanley. Yes. Uh, with the saying that it's more blessed to give than to receive, receiving means that you're still blessed. Amen. Yeah. Meaning that you're not blessed, you're still blessed. And the other point I wanted to make uh, in regards to Melissa's uh, statement about hope is that the definition of hope is having a favorable expectation. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right, good. Kitsy, what do you got? Okay, Melissa, we hear you. We do hear you and we understand that you feel that way. Um, and um, I just want to uh, I want to encourage you with uh, what, um, what I read earlier. It says, you never know where the adventure is going to take you. Just say yes, which is what you have done. No matter what it will cost you, no matter how it will hurt you, what you will gain, no matter what you will, will lose. Be a person who wants to follow or be like Jesus and, je and not just believe in him. And that's what you are doing. And you are amazing. And um, I know sometimes we feel 
certain things and people want to encourage us, but I, I want to do that too. But I want you to know that your feelings are valid um, and we are behind you. We are your Aaron and your her. And we are lifting you up until you will really grab hold of what we know about you and what we see in you. So we love you so much. Amen. Until you know Amen. what we really know about you is the voice of God speaking to you, Melissa. Amen. Kitchy just, Kitchy just prophesied to you. Yeah. yeah. Philip, what do you got? Yeah, I just thought I would uh, also want to encourage Melissa, you know, just, um, you know, I, I had a similar situation to you many, many years ago um, where uh, I, I I constantly found that uh, I was going, I, I was going through a stage in my life where I, um, I found I couldn't, um, I didn't understand why I couldn't uh, hold on to a job long enough. I got fired a few times in my life because I wasn't fast enough. Uh, it was for uh, working in uh, the restaurant trade. And I so wanted to, uh, you know, be good at something. And I just kept failing. In the end, I just actually realized it's not for me. And I kind of got over it. But I really ha um, had a, uh, you know, a, an inferiority complex because I wanted to be good at everything. You know, I wanted to take on courses at a college. And actually, even if I wasn't good at it, just become good because I believe I could. And I kept falling off, you know, and I eventually began to realize I have my limitations. I'm not technically orientated and it's fine. You know, and I also, uh, some years ago, I, uh, I saw on two different occasions, uh, somebody begging for food in, in this town. And we, you don't normally have uh, people in the Netherlands begging for food. And, now, I actually found that he, he said, well, you know, he's, he's looking for some, uh, some, some food. So I said, well, you know, uh, why don't you come, I'll get, you go to, you know, to the, uh, the restaurant around the corner here and I'll buy you something. Now, he was, he was only interested in, in, in money. So I wanted to bless somebody who was looking for something else. So I came to realize I can now give, but sometimes people want things for the wrong reason. So, you know, I... I can understand, but um, my, a lot of the beggars that you have in this country are professionals because you don't need to beg here. It's, it, I know in, in the United States it's different, <laughs> but uh, I just thought I'd just encourage you with that, that, um, you know, the, life changes. And it did, it did for me. Right, that yeah, thing, that's it. Good stuff. Good, good, good stuff. Okay, Jeff. Bye, brother. <laughs> Jeff said he has company. He has to go. Um, yeah, it's been great this morning. Uh, one of the things that uh, popped up here, let me. I think um, next week we're going to continue a little bit with this. I'm going to try and get. I'm going to try and get my the scripture list to Melissa so she can send it out in our midweek. I'm not going to guarantee I'll get that done, but I'm going to try to. Uh, and because I have, God's given me kind of this whole scenario. And next week, we're going to talk about how um, imagination is faith's pardon. So that's going to be. I think that's going to be pretty interesting, and I, I know it is because God's given me some some really cool uh, affirmations in that. So, imagination uh, is what? Excuse me. Faith's faith's partner. Okay. So, and then uh, that's part of it. And then we're also going to be talking about on from that. We're going to be talking about how hope comes from relationships. So this is probably going to be. A lot, a lot along the lines of what you were talking about, Melissa. So I'm, I'm excited to go there. I think it's going to be really cool. So, okay. Well, it's been great this morning. I uh, love being on with all of you and sharing thoughts with each other. It's just been all kinds of stuff. So it's been really cool. So.
<clears throat> so let me see. Yes, Dana. Muted, hon. Well, I'm unmuted, I think. Okay. You know, yeah. You're good. Okay. Well, I just wanted to add, I had kind of a traumatic experience this week, um, which I think I told the ladies already, but um, I fell down the stairs of my house, which was weird because you always think, you know, what would it be like? You don't, you, that thought goes through your mind, you know, it's like, oh my God, that would be horrible. Well, anyway, so I did, I did. And, um, you know, it was so weird because I thought, it's like you, you wonder in slow motion, how did this happen? And you know how quickly all these weird things happen to you. But anyway, um, so what I have learned from reading the book that the ladies and I had read with The Secret, and then there's a follow-on book to that, which talks about the law of attraction, which does have kind of blend in with, to me, blends in with the imagination and, sure. you know, everything's in Christ with God. We're, we're never separated. We're always experiencing yep. life as Christ. And so I just thought, um, you know, when I hit the bottom, I hit my head, you know, real hard. And I just thought all is well and all will be well. And I've learned that, you know, that that's how to think because you don't go into disasterizing everything because God is with you. He's in you. He's never going to leave you or forsake you. And you're experiencing having this experience in this body that we are limited to at this time and um it's really like as well because we are observing ourselves we're aware of what's happening to this body that we're in and limited to but that's not our true identity our true identity is christ oneness with him and so it's so cool that even though we have weird things happen and um, life isn't always, you know, beautiful and wonderful and fantastic, and we can't always smile and be happy about everything. But isn't it a joy that our life is in Christ? It's Amen. we're not separated. Yeah. We're always one with Him, and everything that happens to us, well, or is we're with him he's in us you know and it's i just had to say that um it's been an interesting thing i gave myself two days to let my foot which twisted m recover and then i had to get on it because i said i don't have time for this <laughs> i've got too much to do and um but anyway so i'm just saying i'm rejoicing in the fact that you know whatever happens we're never alone. We're always, we're always cared for. And um, the prayer request that was, I don't know how you pronounce Sadar, um, was some, I don't know how to say your name, but um, I just thank you that you feel good to ask us for prayer. And uh, whoever prayers at the end, why, whatever it is your need is, God is going to get you through. Amen. He will never leave you or forsake you. Amen. Amen. Good stuff. Philip. Yeah, I am going to ask you, um, uh, 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 Jerry, um, have, uh, have you said that to, for, I had contact with, with Bill a few weeks ago, Bill Hanshu, and um, uh, did you set the date at all? Or what? not yet? I... I have a, he is supposed to be getting a hold of me to be, oh, he wants me to be on his podcast first. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember you saying, yeah. And then, and then we're, when we'll work out a date for him to be on with us. So, all right. Okay. I'm, I've actually have, I have feelers out to several different, I've talked to Wendy Francisco and, and, uh, the several others, Catherine Toon, several others oh, to be okay. on our, be on our, uh, share with us. So, yeah, and I I plan on having 
I, I was filled up last week with Barb Simons. I plan on having her back because I didn't get enough. So, yeah, it was I, very I hope, interesting. I, I'm hoping I, you all feel the same way. So yes. Yeah. So I I have a um I just um I was a bit interested with what uh, Dana had to say about the law of attraction. I'd like to know yeah. more about it. That's uh well, actually <laughs> once we get done with our our uh, study on imagination, we're gonna go, we're gonna kind of delve into quantum a little bit. Uh, I've been right. reading about quantum and it's it's fascinating. And how, and that's where that law of attraction comes from. Uh, a lot of that quantum stuff. So yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be looking into that. Oh, uh, okay. Got? No, I, I just thought maybe I, I needed to do some um, <coughs> get some opinion from uh, one of yourselves uh, or go do some uh, kind of like searching for it myself. I'm I'm just very curious about what it is. Oh, it's basically what it amounts to is the law of attraction is the whatever you put out into the universe comes right. back comes back to you so if you put if you plant negative seeds in the universe then you get negative back if you plant positive seeds then you get positive back it's just like just like the sower with the good soil you know if he plants if you plant weed seeds in in a plot that has good soil you're going to spring up weeds or tares if you okay. plant if you plant good crops then you're going to have good crops and they're going to the good crop's going to be thick enough to choke out the weeds, and you won't have weeds. So, uh, so like the, similar to the raw, the law of uh, sowing and reaping. Yeah, it's, it's very similar. Yeah. All right. Philip it the, follows, the it book, follows that. Philip, the book the women read was called "The Secret" by Rhonda Byrne, and uh, that will there's your research right there. I actually, when you first spoke about it a couple of weeks ago. I read into it, but I came to find it's a lot to do with new thought. It's sort of like Gnostic. That's sort of like what? Thought. Gnostic, you know, sort of like um, you are always spirit and you're going to be spirit into eternity. You know, you're not going to have a resurrected body. That's kind of a little bit about new thought uh, philosophy. But that's uh, is kind it, of... Is it by Rhonda Byrne? Is the book yeah, you have Rhonda by Byrne, Rhonda yeah. Byrne? Yeah. But that, that's, uh, I mean, Ladies, I, I need that, to look more, more into it. That, this, that's a rabbit trail. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to say, uh, when I when I read her stuff, I, uh -huh. I take it lightly. And I don't, I mean, you know, I don't like a worry about, oh, is this somehow, I mean, I do get concerned. I don't want to go down a, you know, weird thing. But uh -huh. I do feel like, it's true. We, there is a law of attraction or reaping and sowing or whatever. Yep. And so we can know that we're responsible to go down the positive path and, and not to allow ourselves. Yep. And her next book is more what you were saying. I think it's the, kind of like your, your awareness, but at the same time, if I blend it, I don't let yep. it take over. Like I'm believing yep. her, like she's, 100% correct. In other words, you just take it lightly and God is going to guide you away there from you junk. <laughs> one, of the things, reading, one of the things about reading, no matter what you're reading, whether it be the Bible or anybody else's books at all, yeah. uh, is everything should be tempered through the finished work of Jesus. Exactly. Oh, that's Jesus, regardless, the lens of regardless, Jesus. Of, regardless of what you're reading. And there may be mm -hmm. things in some of the things that you read. There's some of the things, some of the things that I read that I have to go back and say, okay, how does this fit with the finished work mm -hmm. of Jesus? And if it doesn't fit, then I just, I can throw that part away, mm -hmm. but I can yeah. glean what he has for me to learn regardless, even, even through secular writing sometimes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So uh, Bob, one more thing. We got to get out of here. Well, I just think we need to point out that, Dana got a real th hard hit on the head this week, and all of a sudden she's reinterpreting the Bible. I think we need to listen here. I, <laughs> I, I think something may have happened. <laughs> there you uh, go. There you it, go. On, on what you just said, none of us, we don't even completely understand the finished work of, of Jesus. No, no. I mean, if, if you're not willing to go down some paths you don't understand, you're going to miss the deal. Yeah. 
because yeah. I, 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 I wrote the other day, man, if, 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 if we can name it, we don't understand the, it, the, we don't comprehend its dimension. Uh, it, 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 it's a mystery and, and, and whatever you're, you're not willing to, to mist, let, mystify you, you're probably going to miss. Amen. 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 Well, I, we're going to see Dana, would you close us in prayer? Oh, thank you. Um, thank you, Father, for guiding our lives and being with us during this whole conversation and in every Amen. minute of our lives. Amen. And praise you and thank you for uh, all of the lives that we have led by your spirit That and remembering who we are. Thank you for that. And please meet all the needs of Wasim and each one of us, Lord. We know that you are already ready to give us all that we need. And so thank you for it all in advance. And we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Love you all. Thank love you all for being here today. Mm -hmm. And we will see you all next week. And uh, I watched a little bit of the, the cho well, The Chosen. And I, one thing they did that, that I impressed me was when they're leaving somebody or coming away somebody, they, they say, shalom, shalom. And what that means is abundant blessings. So as I leave you, love you all. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. shalom, my, prayer shalom. For you, shalom. my prayer for you and my Thank sermon you to you is be. Yeah.